I love fly fishing, but let's be honest, is it really perfect? Here are five things that need to go away. Stay tuned. Number five, spot burning. Yeah, whenever you have a great fishing spot, tell your friends, tell your family, by all means, that's fine. But do not drop the GPS coordinates on Facebook or Instagram. You don't need to do that. And also, look in the background of the pictures you're taking. Don't put stuff there that everyone's going to recognize. Come on, everybody, don't burn all the good spots. Catchphrases. Do we really need all these catchphrases in fly fishing? Like, gosh, that fly looks so good, even I'd eat it. No, you wouldn't. It's a fly. You wouldn't eat it. It's for the fish. And what about uh, keep a tight line? I mean, has anyone ever been on the river and thought to themselves, you know what? I'm fighting this fish. What did my buddy end his email with? Oh, that keep a tight line. I'm going to keep a tight line. I got it. No, come on. Do we really need all these catchphrases in fly fishing? We don't. Number three, this is an obvious one for me. It's all of the choices and selection in fly lines today. Seriously, I feel like I need an advanced degree as I'm going to buy a new fly line. I don't care if we're talking trout, European nymphing, saltwater. There are so many choices out there. It is mind blowing. I read through all of them. I look at all the different tapers. I look at how many feet each taper is, the sink rates. It is completely overwhelming. So if you've been overwhelmed when selecting a fly line, don't feel bad, we all have. This is a fun one. What about stickers on vehicles? Is it like a rite of passage? Is it a way to kind of show the brotherhood and sisterhood of fly fishing? I'm not quite sure because I feel like it's when I'm driving down the road and I see a motorcyclist and they see another motorcyclist and they kind of do that little wave to each other. And I feel like that's what it is in fly fishing. Like we have to somehow find a way to drive backwards so we can show each other our stickers so we know like, hey, you and me? Yeah, that's right. We have the stickers, that's us. And finally, the most obvious one, social media. Seriously, do you have to post every single fly you tied and fish you caught? I mean, let's think back in the day. Think about those bait shops that had all the Polaroids on the wall. Are you the person that if you went in there, the shop owner would come over and politely say to you, hey, listen, bud, we have 25 Polaroids of you with selfies with your largemouth bass. I think the wall is good for now. If you're that person, you should probably post just a little bit less on social media. Normally, this is the spot in the video where I would say, cue music. And then I would ask all of you, what do you hate about fly fishing? Post it below, but not today. Stop the music. And instead, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna argue against the five things I just told you. All right, spot burning, number five. Now, if someone reaches out to me and asks me about some of my favorite streams, I'm going to tell them some of my favorite streams. I'm not gonna give the exact spot, but at the end of the day, people still have to go and catch the fish. Just because they're in a spot doesn't mean they're going to catch those fish. And speaking of spots, I mean, I love popular spots because that's where everyone goes. And it allows me the opportunity to go to those less popular spots and catch fish. Now, finally, there was this book that came out. It was called Keystone Fly Fishing. It was all about streams throughout the state of Pennsylvania. There's a link to it down below. When that first came out, people were so upset because some of their favorite streams were listed on there and they weren't listed anywhere else in the world. And after about a year, people forgot about them and they kept going back to the normal places where they go and fly fish. So spot burning, it happens not as much as you'd think. Okay, catchphrases. This is a tough one for me to argue back-ish. Now, let's be honest, should you keep a tight line? In most cases, yes. But then I also thought a little bit more. I recently came out with a book called Fly Tying for Everyone and I sold autographed copies off of my website. And in each of those autographed copies, if it was a generic signature, I also put a generic catch line. And it was something along the lines of, tie better flies, catch more fish. So slap the cuffs on, I'm guilty. Number three was fly line selection. Is it confusing? Without a doubt, it is. But I also have to look at it from that other perspective. It gives us more choice and we're able to really select a fly line to match exactly what we're going to be doing, what species we're chasing, the climate. There are so many great things about all of those fly lines out there. My recommendation is simple. Select one fly line company and stay within that brand. And if you have questions, call up that fly line company. They'll answer your questions so you know exactly which fly line you should purchase. Number two was stickers. All right, truth. I have two stickers on my truck. An Andrea Larco sticker. I mean, it's a beautiful fish sticker that she did. I mean, it's awesome. 
and then a Trout and Feather sticker. And if you'd like to buy some Trout and Feather stickers for your vehicle, check them out at troutandfeather.com. They're all free shipping. Oh my gosh. Finally, social media. I really hope when I was talking about this one earlier in the video, someone paused, went down to the comments and said something like, hey Tim, you get that you're posting on YouTube right now. You're part of the problem. Trust me, I get it. And not only do I post on YouTube, but I also post on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And I love to do so from two standpoints, either educational or entertaining. In my mind, there are definitely some negatives associated with social media, but there are also tons of positives. Think about all the creativity that comes out, connecting with others. And I believe in the last decade, fly fishing and tying both have advanced so much because of social media. It's not going anywhere, so I think we have to embrace it for all the good things that it does bring. I know, I know. I hope someone says, Pot, let me introduce you to Kettle, because that's kind of what happened in this video. I took the five things to get rid of and I brought them right back in. So now, officially, it's your turn. Let me know what you think needs to be gone in fly fishing, but be careful because I have a feeling someone may be able to argue to bring it back in. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to reading your comments down below. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. If you have a question for me, please email me at tcamisa at gmail.com. That email address is found down below in the description. It should be on the screen somewhere like right now. If you wanna connect on social media, I've already told you all the places that I post. I'd love to connect with you there. One more time, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see many of you soon.